I've just disembarked a cruise on one of the most luxurious and expensive super yachts in the world, where I saw and did things that I didn't know could happen on cruises. The ship was the Emerald Azura built in 2022, and the advertising promises that guests can experience a billionaire's lifestyle without the price tag. I don't know what a billionaire's lifestyle is like, but this ship, it blew my mind. To say we had ups and downs would be an understatement, literally. For years I've cruised with the budget and the mainstream cruise lines, usually in the cheapest inside cabins, but a cruise on a yacht has of course always been on my bucket list. When a friend of mine who used to work for Emerald reached out and asked me, Emma, would you like to try a cruise on a yacht? I did not have to think about it for a second. That isn't the kind of question that you delay on answering. Before this cruise, I did not know what to expect. I'd heard great things about the included excursions and the water sports platforms, but even yacht cruises have one star reviews. I had no idea if I'd fit in on a cruise like this. I didn't know what would be included. And I wondered if I would ever be able to go back to cruising in a cheap inside cabin after being on a yacht. Would it change me forever? I didn't know. We flew from London to Athens to board the ship and our itinerary would take us around the Greek islands, ending in Rhodes. The cruise was seven nights long and it was over my dad's birthday, so I decided to take him away to celebrate. This seemed like the best birthday present I could ever give, or so I hoped, and I have no idea what I'm gonna get him next year to top this. When we arrived in the airport, we were greeted by an Emerald representative with a sign and we were escorted to the bus that would take us to the ship. We weren't ever left alone to find our own way through the airport, which was really nice because I I have got lost in this situation before. We boarded our bus which only had about 10 people in it and this was a sign of things to come. After going through security in the cruise port we were able to wander up this gangway and walk straight onto the yacht. This was very surreal to me, usually you have to walk through all of these walkways and up lots of stairs to get on a cruise ship but we literally just walked a few steps into what was deck 3 of the yacht. Emerald Azura is six decks in total and 110 meters long. That's less than a third as long as some of the big cruise ships. We were brought straight into the reception area to check in and in total there were only 85 people on this cruise so it's safe to say that the check-in process was very very easy. We were given our cruise cards and we were free to explore the ship. I was so excited. I'd never even seen a yacht like this let alone been inside one. We started by looking into the big main lounge. It felt very elegant, but also very comfortable. I was worried pre-cruise that it would be the type of fancy where you don't want to touch anything, you don't dare move, but it didn't feel like that. It felt lovely, and if I was in shorts or a dress, any kind of casual clothes, I didn't feel out of place in here. I was looking forward to seeing some entertainment in this lounge. I couldn't imagine that a yacht would have a very busy schedule, but I had heard about local acts performing on board, and it didn't take me very long to notice the cookie jar in the corner by the coffee Machine, so it's safe to say I would be back here later. I always say that you can tell how posh a cruise ship is by how fancy the public toilets are and that was absolutely true for this ship. This is what the public bathrooms look like. Just look at this for a second. I wish my house was half as nice as this and that is a weird statement to say about public toilets. We headed up the sparkly staircase that was in the middle of the ship and we found our way to the main pool at the back. This is the one and only staircase so it was very easy to get around and there are a couple of lifts here too. I was amazed by the size of the pool and if you've not cruised before you might not think that this pool is very big but I've been on mainstream cruise lines on ships with thousands of guests where the main pool is smaller than this one on a yacht. All of the furnishings look beautiful and it wasn't very long until I found the food in the corner. I was pretty hungry by this point. Our day had started at 5 a.m. So me and my dad decided to sit down for a sandwich and a drink. The I'm on a yacht feeling hadn't really sunk in yet at this point. I was wondering what everyone else would be like. I didn't know if I would get on with the yacht people. Who were yacht people? I did not know, but I was looking forward to pretending to be one for the week. It felt as though I was a big ship cruiser, but in disguise. A lot of my questions will be answered by the welcome talk that was held in the main lounge. Our cruise director, Natalie, she's not called the cruise director, there's a fancier yacht name for it, but you know what I mean. She introduced herself to us and explained a little bit about how a cruise on a yacht would work. We met the crew in charge of the excursions and a few other departments and had the chance to ask any questions. I've been on quite a few ocean and river cruises and usually if there is a welcome talk there is not a spare seat in the room. Often there will be people perched at the back, people will be standing everywhere, but in this lounge it really didn't feel busy to me. I realised at this point that this was probably what being on a yacht was all about. This cruise was four or five times more expensive than what I would normally pay so it made sense that we would have more space per person. I really liked it and I hope that this would continue for the rest of the cruise. We were given a tour of the ship after the talk and I briefly got to see the observation lounge and inside the bridge. 
Emerald Azura has a completely open bridge policy that means that at any point during the cruise, guests can just wander into the bridge and they can chat to whoever is driving the ship. I mean the captain or someone who works there, not just a random person driving the ship. The only way you can see the bridge on a big cruise ship is if you know the captain or you know somebody there, or if you pay upwards of $100 per person to tour the bridge. Being able to just wander in, that was unheard of to me and it was quite a shock. By now it was time for us to sail away and I was anxious about how much movement we would feel. I'm happy to report that on this day we really didn't feel a thing, but it wouldn't stay like that for the whole cruise. Yacht cruising definitely isn't for everybody and the movement I think is one reason why. We sailed away and got the chance to have a look at our sister ship, the Emerald Sakara. It was now that I really realised that I was on a yacht because I was looking at this ship and she's basically a reflection of us and I was thinking that is one good looking cruise ship. It almost looks like a toy, it doesn't look real. We would see Sakara again very soon and multiple times during this cruise. All of the food on board Emerald Azura is included in the cruise fare and dinner is held in the main dining room between 7 and 9. Everyone can show up at any time during these hours and you can just sit wherever you want. We were usually there as soon as it opened at 7 p.m. I'm normally a 5 or 6 p.m. dinner kind of girl, but because of the time difference, 7 p.m. in Greece was 5 p.m. in the UK, so really, I just stuck with my same schedule. We sat on the lower level, but there's also an area higher up and a part that is outside at the back. I knew that I wanted to sit out here at some point during the cruise, and I hoped that we would get the chance to. Some people did decide to stay on the same tables each night, but we tried our best to try out every single location. This meant that we got got to meet lots of the crew and because we were on a yacht they had the time to chat to us. This isn't something that I'm really used to on the bigger ships. We met a lot of crew members on this cruise and they were always so helpful. I've never known anything like it. I think you could have asked for almost anything and they would have done it or at least tried to. Beer, wine and soft drinks are included with meals and we were always offered these when we sat down along with a bread basket of very good bread. It was the oil though, it wasn't butter. That's how you can tell it's fancy and I'm definitely the butter kind of girl. It didn't take the crew very long to learn my order of a Diet Coke, but my dad did the best he could to sample all of the beers, for research purposes of course. He said that I may need the footage for this video, and I did, so thanks dad. I had read one funny review pre-cruise that gave this yacht one star, and the reason is because one night they had the audacity to serve chicken with a sauce of what looked like ketchup. I was determined to find this dish because to me that sounds amazing. I love ketchup. Ketchup on everything, even on pizza. This first evening had alleviated some of my fears about who would be on their ship and I didn't feel out of place at all. We enjoyed our meal, the food was delicious and I hoped that it would be this good for the rest of the cruise. After a quick drink in the lounge and a little walk around the top deck, which really didn't take very long because this is a yacht, we decided to head to bed. I knew that we had an included excursion the next day and would have plenty of time to explore the rest of the ship. On our seven day itinerary, we had three included excursions. There were more excursions you could buy if you wanted to, but we just stuck with the ones that didn't cost any extra. I don't normally do any excursions anyway, so every single one was just a bonus to me. I'd heard about a spa, a gym, an onboard laundry, and I was hoping that we would have the chance to see those water sports things in action. I had heard that there was a water trampoline, and that is exactly what it sounds like. Breakfast in the main dining room was served until 9am, which is a little early for my liking. I don't think anyone would describe me as an early bird, but it was worth getting up for. They had a big buffet of everything you could ever imagine, including donuts and toast and fruit. Plus you could order omelettes and pancakes and other things from the menu which would be cooked to order. There was a light breakfast of sorts that would stay by the pool longer, but we were planning on heading there for our lunch. We decided to spend the morning exploring the ship and we found the gym and the onboard spa. I really didn't expect a yacht to have these, or if they did, I expected them to be small dark rooms at the bottom of the ship, but this spa was lovely. I see what they mean about this yacht being a billionaire's lifestyle because if I was a billionaire, I would build this gym and a spa like this for myself, maybe in a basement somewhere, that would be cool. It smelt lovely and the crew were happy to show us around. We decided that we would come back later in the cruise and even I did use the gym gym on this ship. I very rarely go to the gyms on the big cruise ships, but I figured I wouldn't be getting my usual steps going up or down the stairs or around the promenade deck like I would on a big ship. There was a little promenade area, I suppose, with the lifeboats on it, but I was not going to get in very many steps there. We headed to the poolside restaurant for lunch and decided to order flatbreads. 
They were made to order and very good. I had my first cookie here as well, and my goodness, they were absolutely amazing. They were so big and gooey and fresh always. They were just perfect. 10 out of 10 on the cookies. While we were here, the captain made an announcement, and that is never normally good news when you're about to dock somewhere. I've never heard the captain say, well, just to let you all know, all is going to plan, everything is fine. The captain did say that due to bad winds, we wouldn't be able to dock in the port of Itia. And yeah, that is Itia, not Ikea, which is how I keep reading it in my head. I think it's actually Itea, but I read it like Ikea. <laughs> Upon hearing this, I thought, oh no, we're missing the port, that means we'll miss the excursion, because that's what normally happens, but that isn't what happens on a yacht, necessarily. The captain was able to drop anchor a little way out, and then we could tender to land. The ship has its own little boats that pop out the side, and to watch, it looked like the ship just birthed a smaller ship, which was very cool. I had no idea that they were hiding in there. For me, being a Brit, it was very hot when we were wandering around the Temple of Apollo, and I was very happy to have my emerald bottle with me. We did get to keep these too. The history of this site goes back to the 4th century BCE, which I cannot even comprehend. That's incredible. We went in the museum, we saw some interesting statues, and I found the most adorable kitten, or maybe I should say they found me. They had a great time playing with my dad's shorts and sat behind me, which was so sweet. I really did want to bring them home to be a little brother or sister for my cat Hudson. They even look alike, but apparently it doesn't work work like that. We headed back to the ship and next on our itinerary was dinner and the captain's welcome talk in the main lounge. The daily schedule is displayed on the TV in the cabin and there are lots of paper versions at reception for the people that wanted them. Emerald don't have any sort of app so every day we would take a picture of the schedule. We did have a change to our planned trip later in the cruise and they were able to change that schedule midway through the day and have it update on all of the TVs which was very clever. More about that change later but yes it was caused by the bad weather that we had. One of my favourite areas on the ship that we hadn't explored yet was the observation lounge. There were the most comfortable chairs here and lots of puddles, not puddles, thankfully, puzzles, lots of puzzles and daily Sudoku. Here there were incredible views and it really did feel like having your own yacht when you were in here. The captain would often just wander by and chat and you could go out on this deck area anytime. Later in the cruise we would have some live entertainment out here too. Also on board there's a small laundry room that anyone can use anytime free of charge and there's even a little gift shop. This is where the bear that became friends with our channel mascot Captain Hudson came from and his name was was Salvador. Every dinner was three courses and the menu changed every day. There was an always available section that you could always order and things like vegetarian food, gluten-free food, it was all clearly marked on the menu. We were always able to find things that we liked and there were local dishes on the menu too, so I did try a few things that I wouldn't normally order. I don't claim to be somebody who's a big foodie. I don't know that I have a very sophisticated palate. Yorkshire puddings are my favorite food in the world, but to me, everything tasted very good and it all looked beautiful. I'll let you judge the food here because I always get comments that say that food looks incredible next to another comment that says that food looks like baby sick. So food is very subjective. I liked it though. I will say I did notice how fresh the food was and you could have anything anytime and it would always be good quality. Even things like little tubs of raspberries, you could just get them and they would always be fresh. There was never a moldy one in there or a squishy one or a sour one. They were always really good. The bigger cruise lines don't seem to do things like that so much just because of the quantity and storing them. But but on a yacht, nothing was any problem. I will say that the vegetarian portions were much, much smaller than the meaty versions. So if you are just eating veggie food for the whole cruise, make sure you order some sides or combined dishes. It's always okay to do that. A little later in the cruise, we did have the chance to sit outside and it's just first come first serve, but these ones were normally the first to go, I think for obvious reasons. It was a little windy out here, so we did have to eat our food pretty quickly, but it was great to chat to the other guests and to just enjoy the warm weather. At the captain's welcome, the captain let us know who was on this cruise in terms of guests. And to my surprise, the top nationality was the UK. There were 34 guests from the UK, followed by 25 Australians, eight from the USA, eight from Canada, four from Germany, and two from the Netherlands and New Zealand. He let us know that there were 76 crew members for 85 guests, and I've never been on a ship with anywhere near that ratio before. On most of the big cruise ships, you'll have three to one, two to one, which means that each crew member's looking after three guests. But on here, one crew member had 1.5 guests. 
Cats, basically. After the captain's welcome, the ship's musician Omar played us some music. Omar was a brilliant singer and guitarist and he would pop up all over the ship. If we were in the lounge, Omar's there. Eating lunch, Omar. Sail away, who is that? You guessed it, it's Omar. He always gave the ship such a happy vibe and if I really was a billionaire, maybe I would hire Omar or someone like Omar to constantly play music, which is kind of the soundtrack of my life. When I woke up the next morning, we were docked next to a big Morella cruise ship. Morella are a British cruise line and their ships compared to other cruise lines are really pretty small. This one is the Explorer 2 built in 1994 but compared to us she felt huge. We were also there with the Costa ship and after a walk around the port we decided to test out the hot tub on the top deck. On the top deck of the ship there was a bar where we would spend lots of time and lots of comfortable seats. It was up here that there was a smoking area too and what a great view for a smoking area. It was upwards of 30 degrees every day on this cruise which is 86 Fahrenheit. The hot tub was 40 degrees C which is over 100 Fahrenheit which meant that the hot tub wasn't really that much hotter than being outside. It was just all very very hot. It was good fun though and we did have some drinks up here by the pool. I was wondering when I was sat on the top deck how could people get up here if they couldn't do stairs because because we'd always come up these stairs on the side, but I did notice this area in the middle, there was a lift in there next to some more of those very fancy public toilets. We headed to the pool for a poolside burger which was very good and my dad had the Australian burger that had a fried egg on it. I've never heard of that before so if that is an Australian thing please let me know in the comments. The service was always really good and fast and sitting around this area gave us the chance to chat to the other guests. I did expect most people on the yacht to be a lot older than me just because of the price point but I definitely wasn't the youngest person on this cruise. The ages ranged from people in their 20s all the way up to I don't know 80s, 90s, I can't really tell. There were family family groups, couples, solo cruisers. The ship technically isn't adult only but it's definitely not designed for kids. Teenagers who could entertain themselves, totally fine, but it's very much geared towards adults. You're never going to find Peppa Pig by the pool or water slides. I don't think you would find things like cots in the cabins. Maybe you would, I don't know. But that is your Britishism of the week. Here in the UK, what a baby sleeps in is called a cot. It's the kind of bed with the slats on it, so in theory the baby can't climb out. I've heard it called a crib a lot outside the UK, but here it's definitely a cot. The word crib just makes me think like, welcome to my crib. You know what I mean? As we sailed away, we had the chance to wave at the Costa cruise ship, which was a bizarre experience for me. Costa are a budget Italian cruise line and I've cruised with them for as little as £38, which is 48 US dollars per night, which is 10 times cheaper than this yacht. So it's safe to say I'm usually on the other side waving at the yacht, but I really did enjoy switching sides. I didn't know at this point, but this would actually be the last time that we would dock on this cruise. Our next ports of Santorini, Mykonos and Crete, they were all tender ports. I usually find tender ports a bit annoying because you have to wait a long time to get a space on the tender and then come back. That wasn't the case on this ship though because when you got to the pickup point at the other end ready to come back they would radio the ship and if the boat wasn't already coming they would send one for you. I think really that's the difference between cruising on a yacht and a big ship. You do get treated like royalty and you start to feel like it. At some points, me and my dad had the tender completely to ourselves. Other times, of course, it was busier when we came back from the group excursions, but we never had to wait very long. In Crete, we had a local act come on board and perform for us outside. They were fantastic dancers, but as soon as they started to pull everybody up to dance with them, I ran away and I sought refuge on the top deck. I am not a person who likes audience participation and definitely not when it's dance related. It just is not my thing. They did the same thing when we had a local act perform in the lounge and I did also run away then too. Lots of people were enjoying it, no one noticed that I left, but it's just not my thing. How anyone can do this and tap their feet like this though, I have no idea. It was very impressive, I've tried and I definitely can't. We took this cruise in August, so when we docked in Santorini and Mykonos, there were maybe four or five other cruise ships there, and it's safe to say that the ports were busy. If you're someone that doesn't like crowds, I would definitely recommend visiting at another time of year. They are lovely places to visit, and I would highly recommend it, but I know not everybody enjoys this hustle and bustle, and it's not like this year round. We decided that this would be a good day to visit the gym and the infrared sauna. The gym was pretty good as far as gyms go. It's a few machines, it's some free weights. I went on this hardcore treadmill and it was a really nice atmosphere in there. If I was on the ship for longer, I definitely would have come back again. The idea of an infrared sauna is that it only heats you and it doesn't heat the air around you. So in theory, you can spend more time in the sauna. We had the sauna to ourselves and it was very chilled out. Another chilled out spot that I loved on this yacht 
that rhymes, it wasn't supposed to rhyme, but it was these big seats that they have at the back of the ship. We would often go here for a swim and they had these huge pillows that just arrived in the pool one day. It also went green, it was just lighting, but it did look like this glowing green pillow soup at one point. Because there were only 85 guests on board, it was no problem to have the whole pool to yourself. Of course, there's still busier times when other people are in there, but if you wanted it to yourself, no problem, we did. Being on a yacht did mean that we got to visit smaller places that the bigger ships could never go to, like Catapola. We had a guided included tour of the island, and it was on this tour that I learned why houses are always blue and white in Greece. It turns out that there actually used to be a law that meant that all the houses had to be painted white. This was put into force when there was a cholera outbreak, and what they used to paint the limestone had some disinfection properties. It's not the law anymore, but most of the houses still are white. On our schedule after the excursion was the water sports equipment time. The plan was to sail away from our anchor point, stop somewhere else and everyone could go for a swim. Unfortunately this didn't go to plan, it was far too rocky, it was very very windy and they did have to cancel it. Apparently they can only put this equipment down when it's good weather and they can't do it when tendering because I guess the tender boats might knock into someone who's on a trampoline, which isn't a sentence that I ever thought I would say. It was disappointing of course but there's nothing you can do about the weather and it means that maybe I'll have to go back and try it another day. As soon as we sailed away Away from our protected anchoring point I totally understood why we could not get that equipment out. It was really pretty rocky and walking around the ship was getting quite tricky. Looking at the horizon down the corridors or out of the cabin balconies you can see for yourself. I'm sorry if this makes you feel seasick through the screen. I am somebody who gets seasick but I didn't feel unwell on this cruise at all. As soon as the captain mentioned rough weather I took my favourite seasickness medicine. I put on this wristband because why not? I'm not sure it does anything but why not? And I was totally fine. It's always a lot better to prevent seasickness rather than treat it if you can, but I was totally fine. Maybe I finally got used to rocky seas after all this time. This cruise was by far the most expensive cruise that I've ever been on. As I said in the start of this video, I was invited on board by a friend who used to work for Emerald, so I didn't pay a cruise fare, which is why you'll see the paid promotion button on this video. I usually pay full price for all of my cruises, but when I tell you the price of this cruise, I think you'll understand why I decided to accept this trip and didn't pay for it myself. I cruised during the peak season of August which definitely did increase the price but the basic price for this cruise was £3,860 which is almost $5,000 per person. We were upgraded to the balcony which would have cost an extra £1,420 each and then we had the drinks package which would have cost £756 per person. That is a lot of numbers but for the seven night cruise that you've seen in this video per person in total that would be £6,036 based on two people sharing the cabin. That's roughly £862 or just over $1,000 per person per night. It was great to be a yacht person for a week but if you're on a budget I recently took a cruise that cost £45 per person per night. To find out how that went and why I chose this cruise to introduce my friends to cruising check out this video next. 